uh, I received a question from one of your friends. I'm not quite sure whether she's attending the uh, session right now. Uh, is Tengku here? No, right? Okay. So Tengku is basically asking about uh, the network diagram and the critical path, the calculation of the critical path, and whether actually we should, uh, what do you call, perform the calculation with the early finish, early start, slack, late finish, uh, late start. But when I pass the uh, assignment to you, uh, the two exercises and and the uh, one home assignment, uh, the idea is for you to understand about the uh, network diagram first, uh, not about the concept of later on uh, the thing that will be developed into uh, part into the uh, program evaluation and review technique, or probably not really that much into critical path method either. So what I would like you to understand is actually about the network diagram first on how and how uh, can you calculate the critical path method. Okay, I think uh, Tanku is here. So uh, what you want to know uh, is that uh, how to perform the calculation for the critical path. Now before uh, we go there, uh, probably I will just give you a brief explanation on uh, the network diagram itself because not everyone can uh, understand clearly on the concept of the network diagram about uh, what is actually the uh, activity on node and what is activity on arrow. So I'll just give you a brief uh, explanation on this. Uh, I, First of all, I would like to remind you that this, this session is optional. If you think that this session will be such a burden for you uh, for the prolonged uh, prolong discussion or anything, I, I will try my best to keep everything uh, compacted, which means that uh, as brief as it could. Uh, so, But if you find out that you need to exit from the session, you can do it anytime you would like to. Okay, so I will just give you a brief explanation on what is the uh, network diagram because probably most of you uh, is quite confused on the concept of the network diagram. For this matter, uh, let me share you my screen first. I think I have opened. Right. I will try my best to. everything in a brief manner. I believe this is the uh, lesson three, week three, the one that has been explained by Prof. Eri. You have gun chart, you have also probably before this the word breakdown structure and uh, after gun chart you have the network diagram. I wouldn't explain more on network diagram on this matter. Okay, so uh, technically, when you have a project, when you have a project, okay, mm, when you start a project here, okay, you will start from the first three things. Number one, is the work breakdown structure. This one is defining what you are going to do with the project. The second one is the either gun chart, okay, or probably uh, the network diagram. Network diagram is for you to understand the uh, workflow better compared to gun chart. This one is to manage the uh, task and the time management. Okay, and this one more to the understanding of the workflow. So we are talking about network diagram. Let's just talk about network diagram. So what is network diagram actually? Network diagram is uh, it's a diagram, nothing else. I'll give you an example. 
a very uh, simplified an, uh, example. For example, uh, let's talk about your uh, IDP. Okay, uh, you have IDP uh, provided. I believe not everyone already has uh, FYP, or probably some of you will take it later on. Let's just talk about IDP. Okay, in IDP you will have a project with uh, other students in, in in the department. Okay. And you uh, later on uh, have to start whenever you want to start an IDP. Okay, I'm not quite sure how you start with the IDP. Okay, but you will have, for example, uh, kick off meeting. Sorry, kick off uh, meeting, and then after the kick off meeting, you agree to have a uh, literature study. All right. And then let's just say that uh, after that, you are talking about the uh, execution of the project and all uh, project execution, whether it is a manufacturing process or something else. Again, okay, then after that, report writing. So when we talk about uh, the network diagram, okay, you are talking about actually the work. Uh, flow of the project. For example, if you assign kickoff meeting with letter A and then literature study with B, project execution with C, and then report writing uh, with D, all right? So, uh, and all of you agree that actually after kickoff meeting, uh, the thing that you must do is literature study, and then after literature study, you have to do project execution and so on. Then the network diagram of this IDP project is A, B, C, and D. So starting from A to B to C and D. From starting point, okay. Start from here, okay. And then the end. This is a very simplified uh, network uh, diagram. Of course, things will not be very simple like this things will be a little bit complicated. For example, uh, you find out that later on, uh, project execution probably can be done uh, in parallel, okay, with the report writing. So instead of after, uh, you do C, uh, you do D after C, okay, D can be actually be done after B, immediately after B. And then after that, uh, erasing this one, Okay, and then amending the uh, end of the project itself, you will have uh, E, sorry, A, B, C, D, report writing. Now, uh, you will end it immediately. So, both of this will immediately go to the end point, to the end of the project. Okay, so this is a simplified a diagram. It's just a simply uh, simply a diagram. But when we talk about uh, about project management, of course you cannot just uh, make the diagram as you wish. Uh, there's a regulation. There's a there's a rule in that one, right? So I think it's better for us to discuss about our uh, assignment uh, in this matter, right? So you have uh, your exercise. Let me find it first. This is this week one. I believe this is your assignment, your exercise. Oh, sorry. Should have been from here. One moment. Six thing. Okay, I will give you the example on the calculation of uh, week one. Okay, I believe this is your uh, assignment.
Uh, by the way, excuse me, sir. Mm -hmm. Are you going so, to record this session? Sorry, say it again. Are you going to record this session? Am I going yes. to what? Record, record. I'm currently recording, so I will share it with oh. you later on. Uh, All right. Okay. Mm. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. So, back to uh, the session again. Mm, sorry. I will repeat. Uh, record. Let's just screenshot this. Right. So this is your assignment. Okay. Like I told you before, uh, or I didn't tell you before, because last tutorial was actually uh, pending. Right. There are two type of logic uh, for network diagram. The first one is activity on uh, arrow, and then the other one is activity on nodes. Okay. The difference is that the activity on arrow, if you have task uh, A. For example, uh, the uh, kickoff meeting, for example, is actually uh, the kickoff meeting is actually denoted as activity A, okay, in this manner, right? So whenever you are working with the activity on arrow, you will write uh, it down like this, okay, with the two. Uh, circle indicating the uh, starting and the end point of the activity A, right? This one uh, you will do a, a numbering later on. For example, one and two. In activity on node, you will put A within the node itself, and then after that, followed by the next activity. For example, activity B and so on. Okay, it's just a matter of location. One is on top of the arrow, and the other one is inside the node, inside the circle. Only that for now, all right? So let's just solve uh, these questions, okay? You have an activity from A, B, C until G. So let's just solve it with A, O, N first, okay? Why A, O, N? It's the easiest one, okay? And then it's supported with many project management software. So you start with activity A, so you just need to simply write down activity A and then put it inside the node, right? And then you start with activity B. Activity B has no predecessor at all, right? Okay, so you write B. B is not connected through A. Okay, but the thing is that we cannot start the activity from two points. Or, I mean, we cannot start the project from two points. So we have to... Uh, combine them okay with the uh, starting point so let's just put the starting point over here right let's just put the starting node over here okay and then make an arrow pointing to a and b all right so we are not uh, leaving a and b uh, floating around uh, without starting point after that you check activity c activity c is from a so you write down c over here okay and then put an arrow. Activity D is also from A, right? So this is activity D. E is from B, so you write down this is E. Okay, and then F is from D. Okay, G is from B and C. So G uh, from B, G from B and C, right? So if I put uh, G over here, okay, and then you try to connect it over here, okay? You cannot just uh, make it as you wish that you are going to connect the arrow from here and then somehow you make a loop over here and then make a crossover over here, right? Okay. Even though actually in your slide it was said that uh, crossover is allowed. Yes, sometimes crossovers uh, are not avoidable. Sometimes you couldn't avoid it. This is the crossover. Okay. Sometimes it's unavoidable. But uh, all project managers have their own standards. For me, uh, as much as you could, you should avoid crossovers. If you still can uh, arrange everything, then you should arrange everything first. 
because the more crossovers you have, the more confusing uh, we have to read the uh, network diagram. So that one would be uh, bad, actually, right? So let's just repeat it again. We have the starting point. This time, we arrange it. We have A, and then we have B. Okay, so instead of putting C uh, on top, I will drag C at the bottom here. C over here. Okay, and then I will put D on the top, right? D, like that. And then after that, uh, I will put E a little bit to the bottom. I think it's not good enough. Okay. We'll drag the arrow just a little bit far to the bottom. This one will be mm, E. Right. Make sure that the arrow is making a contact with the circle. I don't want it to be floated. Uh, okay, we finish from E. What is F? F is from D. This one will be F. And then G from B and C. So you will have G over here. So, from C coming in, and then from B coming in. Now, as you can see, we have three endpoints for the project, which is activity F, G, and E. Now, because we have three endpoints, let's just put the endpoint over here. This is the endpoint. And then G is going to the endpoint of the project. F is going to the endpoint of the project. And E is going to the endpoint of the project. By arranging it this way, we can avoid the crossover. All right. So activity on, on nodes is quite simple. All you have to do is just to write it down and then follow the logic. Let's just check it. Whether we make mistake or not, let's just check it first. This is the good habit for us. Let's see. A. Activity A. Activity A okay, has no predecessor, which means that there is no arrowhead should come into node A from anywhere except from the starting point. See? So there's only one arrow from the starting point. So is it correct? Yes, it is correct. So we finish from A. What about B? B is the same. Okay. No arrow should be coming in into B except from the starting point. B is correct. So what about C? C. Okay. C has one predecessor. One arrowhead coming in from activity A. See? This one coming in from activity A. The only arrowhead coming in from A. So C is correct. Correct. What about D? D is correct as well. E. Okay. Activity is the same. Coming from D. Right. F. Coming from D. Correct. And then G. Coming from B and C. Look at this. From C. One. And then from B. One. Right. So this one is correct as well. And then after that, all of them go to the endpoint. So that's how you uh, should draw the uh, activity on node. Uh, any question for this before I start to the activity on uh, arrow? Uh, is there is there any difference for for the node if I make it circle or square? No, no. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, repeat it again. I I couldn't hear you uh, clearly. Okay. Uh, at uh, at the slide for mm -hmm. the activity on node, there mm -hmm. is a uh, that one is a square, then uh, make it arrow right. And for the node here, we make it square. So is there any difference if I uh, we make square uh, node or circle node? No, uh, it doesn't matter. The node is just a node. Matter. Yeah, the node is just a node. Uh, like I told you. Uh, each project manager and each method has their own standard. Professional has their own standards, of course. But uh, as long as uh, the rule is not, uh, what do you call, the rule is not being, uh, you know, violated. What is the rule? The rule is simple. The uh, predecessor should be always on the left side, which means that if you have activity, the first activity, activity A, Right, you have activity A, and then the next activity is activity B. You cannot put activity B okay somewhere on the left side of activity A and then put the arrow to the left side. 
that is not uh, acceptable or at the very least it's a bad practice so we don't want this one the arrow should always go to the right side so it will be easier for us to interpret it or okay it should go okay it's quite rare as well unless uh, the network diagram is quite complicated I found some uh, or you can go to the bottom okay so either go to the right side or that one should go to the bottom so that's why you notice that actually it's either always go to the right side okay or uh, slanted a little bit to, to the bottom okay usually uh, you can arrange this one to, to save some space on on your paper on, on the uh, document so uh, that's the reason why you have to follow the rule go to the right side or go to the uh, go to the button for the next activity okay anything else no, no? okay all right okay so we let's let's solve the uh, what do you call now let's solve the uh, activity on the arrow so how what, what what makes it different on activity on arrow uh, activity on arrow so for activity on arrow all you have to do is just uh, actually it's quite challenging but actually when when you know what where to start it's quite easy so you have activity a let's just throw it this way let's just start by scribbles right I have a I have arrow right then a should have a starting point and then end point of a or b b should have oh sorry my mistake arrow over here and then starting point and end point right but okay activity n and activity b has no predecessor so they should start from the same point so this node okay this even this starting point should be merged so instead of drawing it this way you can drawing it this way on sharing the same starting point this one will be a and this one will be b Sorry, because drawing on top of the uh, tablet is quite hard. Right, A and B. We're done with A and B. What about C? C is from, coming from A. So let's just put it put it exactly from A first. Doesn't matter about the shape or, or whether it's complicated or not. So this is C. D is also coming from A. So this is the end point of A. So you put D over here. Right? And then E comes from B. No, let's just put it here, this direction. So long as it is pointing to the right side or to the bottom, that should be fine. This is E, right? And then F of the D. So let's just put it here. This is F. Right? The last one, G, if after B and C. Oh, it's quite challenging. B is over here and then C is on the top. Okay? You know what does it mean? In AOA, we cannot make a crossover, so it is not allowed to make a crossover. So what you should do for uh, for this one, you have to rearrange it first. So let's just rearrange it first, right? So let's rearrange this by replacing uh, C and D. Right, so I will put uh, C at the bottom. This one will be C, and then D will go to the top. Right? A, B, C, D, E, F, F after D. I'll put F over here. And G is after B and C. So, because we don't know yet, uh, Hold on, I will, I will also shift E a little bit to the bottom, so it will be easier for you. Let's just bring it down to give some space for G. So this one will be, what was it again? Uh, one of their B, it's E. Okay, the question is, where is activity G? Let's just separate it first. Separate the uh, activity first. This is G. The arrow 
that comes into the starting point of G should come from B and C. That's a rope. Okay, so let's just bring this one okay to any of them first. Whether you want to merge the starting point of G with the end point of C, or you want to merge with the uh, end point of B, it doesn't matter. So let's just connect this one to C first to see what will happen. Okay, so what will I do is that I'm going to uh, merge these two points over here, right? So we can redraw them similar to this. So I'm going to redraw C first. Okay. Redraw C. This is C. And because we are sharing uh, the endpoint of C with G, so G should be here. Right. Okay, the question is, is it possible to connect B, okay, the endpoint of B, to C over here? So it will be the starting point of G as well, right? Or should we use dummy? Of course, you can use dummy. But the rule for AOA, okay, the number of the dummies, okay, should be minimum. You cannot just make... Uh, dummies as you wish okay if this two can be merged okay without without okay making dummies that would be better how do we know if let's say that by dragging uh, this endpoint of B to C okay that we are not going to have uh, a coinciding line between line this line this line B and line C okay then actually we don't need dummy so let's just write let's just draw it so I'm going to erase this, okay, and I'm going to shift uh, B a little bit to the top. Hmm, sorry. This one will be B. Oh, that's not. Told you I'm going to merge them. I'll bring V over here and then I will erase this one and then force C to join here. This node. Okay? And then uh, G will be shifted as well so G will be here this is G and E will be branched out sorry E will be branched out from This is A. Right. So, we got everything already. Correct. But remember, this three, okay, this three, one, two, and three should share the endpoint. But before uh, we take it that way, let's just check the uh, consistency of the flow first. Let's see A. A has no predecessor. So, there is no arrow should be coming in into the beginning node of A, there's nothing, so it is correct. B, okay, also the same, correct. C, okay, or C, sorry, this one is C, okay. Only one arrow should be coming into this uh, point, to this node, okay, which is coming from A. So is it correct? Yes, it is correct. Okay, and then D, okay, should also have the coming point from A, is it correct? Yes, only one arrow over here. Okay, and then E, right, should come from B only. Now you see, E is a mistake because not only, not only, uh, not only.
only B coming in at the beginning of E, but C is also coming to this point. So is it wrong? Is it right or wrong? This one is wrong. So we have to redo the design again. Mm, I'm going to erase this one one more time. We will find out where is the dummy actually. That is A, we have B, uh, C is after A, D is after A, and then uh, E is after B. Alright, okay, and then F is after D. Correct, and then G is after B and C. Now we find out because bringing this two together, okay, this node and this node together, resulting to the mistake of uh, E, where if you merge it like before, uh, you will have C also coming in at E, then there is no other way except for you to use the dummies. So, draw one dummies over here, and then you will have the result. But, again, we have three endpoints, F, G, and E. This one, two, and three should merge together. So, how to do this? Let's just bring F and G together first. F and G, we bring them together. So, I'm going to erase this one. I'm going to draw F line, and then it will go to the endpoint, merging them together. F will be here, okay, and then let's see whether we can bring E also to the same point without coinciding any line. So if we bring C, uh, sorry, I mean E to the top over here, okay, we notice that we are actually not going to uh, coincide anything, okay. And that these things can be bring without coinciding with any other line, like with this and this, right? So let's check the consistency one more time. A has no predecessor, correct. B has no predecessor, correct. C has only one predecessor, one arrow coming in to the node, correct. D only has one coming in to the node, which is from A. The same, also correct, right? B has only one. Uh, sorry, E has only one, which is coming from B. Now, is it correct? Now, you see E. Is there any other arrow coming into this node, the beginning of E? There is only one, which is B. So, E is not correct. What about F? F, uh, F only D coming in to node F. And that is correct as well. And then G comes from B and C. This is G, the beginning of G, right? comes only from B, from the dummies of B, and then from C. Correct. So, this is the proper network diagram. But does it end here? No. It doesn't end here for the uh, activity on arrow. What you have to do is to give, later on actually, you should give the proper numbering. Because to define the activity, you can also uh, start uh, define it by the uh, numbering of the event. So let's start by numbering the uh, nodes itself, the starting point and the end point of the task. So the numbering should increase from the left to the right side, actually. So this one, will, for example, will be 1, and then I will put 2 at the end of A, and then I will put 3 over here. And then I will put 4, this one will be 5, and this one will be 6. So later on, when you want to identify activity A, Activity A can be identified also as activity 1, 2. Activity B is activity 1, 3. Activity C is activity 2, 5. Here, C is 2, 5. D is actually 2, 4. E is actually 
three six and f is actually four six if none of the activities have the same number which means that for example one two uh, didn't appear twice somewhere uh, in the list of the task then that is correct if let's say for example for activity d suddenly you have the number uh, the numbering of four two from the big to the small uh, from the bigger number to the smaller number then you have made mistake in the numbering so this one is unacceptable so the smaller one first followed by the bigger one that's the blow so this is how you uh, make the a o a activity on arrow the next questions how to calculate the grid oh, okay before before we start uh, any question first about about the network diagram how to draw the AOA uh, sir how do I know uh, when to use dummy lines like like G has G activity has B and C activity so when there's two or more than two activities going on then we use dummy activities or dummy lines we use the dummy lines when you have made mistake in uh, the network diagram in the flow of the network diagram like I did remember when uh, I made mistake over here by merging uh, this one by merging uh, the endpoint like I say uh, bringing this point point five and point three together right uh, okay I will erase this one first I will, I will repeat it one more time let's say that you don't want dummies right you don't you don't want to make any dummies because we have to avoid dummies and then suddenly you you have to you want to bring it you want to bring it because uh, you think that it is possible right okay I'll, I'll, I'll make a new one okay like for example this one you think that you can make it this way you have uh, the first one and then this is a followed by uh, B and then after that, you have uh, D, and then you bring C over here, okay? And then after D, you have F, and then after uh, B, C, D, E, okay, now, now the problem is, is E, E is over here, okay? And then you think that uh, you want to bring you you have G floating over here, okay? You have G floating. Definitely, you have to merge G either with this, okay? You have to merge this point, the starting point, the starting point of G, with either the endpoint of C or the endpoint of B. Why? Because the predecessor is B and C. This three point must be merged together. In theory they should start from one point so it should actually uh, the ideal uh, the ideal uh, illustration should be like this this is C coming in and this is B coming in and then after that you have G see this is the ideal one two things coming in into one node B and C coming in into the beginning of G. That's how you interpret this one. Now you think that you can bring this without dummy, without without this. You, you think that you can bring uh, point 0.3 and 5 over here, this one and this one without dummies. So you just you just do it. Like like for example, you yeah, okay, uh, uh, maybe it doesn't need dummies and then and then suddenly you you just merge it like this. You just merge it like this and then you connect uh, B over here. No, oh, sorry, my bad. Okay, I should erase uh, E first. Alright, I think I made a mistake just now. This is B, and then after B. It is E, like you want to say. Like you, you think that it will work, and then after C, uh, you have G. 
B and C, you have G. Right. My question is, at this diagram, at this diagram, the one uh, below here, let me erase this one so you are not going to... Uh, okay. At this point, my question is this. This point. Okay. Pay attention to this point. Uh, the predecessor of G is supposed to be B and C. Is it correct that G has predecessor of B and C? It is correct. Why? Yes. Look at look at the arrow. C is coming in over here. B is also coming in, right? So what's the problem? We don't need dummies. Is it? Do you really don't need dummies? And then when you check everything again, A, B, C, and then suddenly you find out that E E is supposed to have only B as predecessor. E supposed to have only B as predecessor. Look at this. But what, what did you do just now? Because of you are drawing it this way, now E has two predecessor. C and B. Remember, this is the beginning for E as well, not only for G. This is the beginning event for E. But how many arrows coming in? Two. B and C. So, you have been nullifying this one. You made mistake on this. Because of that, Okay, you created uh, you create a situation where the predecessor of E is actually B as well. So the, the, the diagram is, is a big mistake. It's a no. Now this is the time when you realize, okay, then if that's the case, we cannot bring uh, the node together then. I can bring C and G into one same node, which is node number 5. Okay, point number 5, event number 5. But I cannot bring the end of activity B together with 0.5. Then you have to draw dummies. There is no other way. You have to draw dummies for that. And that's when you need dummies. All right? Thank you, sir. Got it. Got it. Okay. Now, the question is simple. Uh, we go we go to, to a critical path. Now. Do we need... Slack. Do we need calculation of early start, early finish, late start, late finish? No. For example, you got activity A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. Okay, let, let's just make a number. Easy number. I'll, I'll take this one. One, one, two. In terms of week. Okay. One, one, two, uh, three, four, and uh, let's just make this one two. And this one probably two as well. So how can we calculate? Uh, how can we calculate the critical path? How many path we have? Okay, now let me erase this one, right? So you are not going to be confused. Okay. Uh, wait, so I have an, uh, one more question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, regarding the numbering, uh -huh. like for example, for the number two and three, mm -hmm. uh, is it the same if we... Number three, number two is uh, from B to what is there to E, right? And number three is from A to D. No, no, oh, repeat, repeat, repeat. One, one more time. Is it? Uh, is it the same? Uh huh. If we the number two, we put between B and E, and mm -hmm. number three between A to D. Number two between B. What you meant if we interchange? I mean, ah, you mean changing the numbering. So let's say that yeah, uh, two is thing? at the bottom over here. Ah, yes, yes. yes. Ah, no, doesn't matter. Your okay. your network diagram later on will be the reference point uh, of the documentation of the whole project. Mm -hmm. So once you develop it, you distribute it to your team for communication purpose. You make mistake with the network flow, then you are. You, as the project manager, is responsible for the communication. I mean, you are making a chaotic situation over the flow of the project, which is unacceptable. Definitely, your company will fire you immediately. So, numbering? No, doesn't matter. You can change the numbering position, so long as you stick to, this, to the same one when you are communicating with the team. So, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, two must be over here. No, it's just a common thing that, uh, and it's a good habit to start Go to the right side and go to the bottom. All right. Okay. Okay. Now uh, let's let's erase this one. Let's let's 
talk about the uh, critical path. Don't I just erase something? Yeah, okay, here we go. We have critical path. Okay, so we have the calculation. All right, this is in terms of weight, the uh, estimated completion. Okay, and this is in terms of weight, and there's another column over here. But first of all, we have to define how many paths actually that uh, the how many paths we can do. Okay, to complete the project itself. Okay, this is quite important to define this one. Okay, to define this. You have multiple. Uh, we will start from AON. Uh, am I supposed to take this? Where is AON? This is AON. Right. Okay. I need to translate it again. Okay. Uh, I will give uh, a different numbering this time. this and then let me erase this one because you don't need this I will give a uh, false numbering one more time I will give uh, a simulated number let's say that this is one one three four two four two right that should be enough right okay how many paths do we have Okay, to complete the uh, the process. Okay, actually it's simple. Let's just start from A. To complete the project, if we start from activity A, okay, let's say that this is path number one. Okay, it, when you start activity A, okay, guys, let's start with the meeting. Meeting is activity A. Let's start with the meeting. What is after the meeting? After, after the meeting, you have to uh, start with activity D probably uh, design planning or whatever it is and then once you finish with activity B you have to, uh, to go with activity F right after activity uh, F that's the end of it correct so you have complete this route actually one and two right this route one two three and four right correct is there any path that we can go until we reach the end point there is first you start with A so you start with A, you continue with C. Once you finish with C, you have to go to G. And then after that, you got the N activity. This one will be zero, counted as zero. All right? So you finish with this as well. One, two, three, four. What about this one? We didn't start from B. Okay, let's start from B. B, and then we go to G. All right? After G, is there anything else? No. All right? And then n immediately zero okay this is path number one sorry this is path number two this is path number three and then the second path is b and then after that finishing complete uh, activity e and then after that immediately n right so how to calculate the critical path simple just put the number on top of the uh, on top of or at the bottom of, of the nodes all right it depends on the style of the manager actually so let's just put the, this one here a has one b has one where is b all right c has three d has four where's d okay e has two f has four and G has two. So how to define which one is the critical path? Critical path is the longest path. So for first path, A one plus D plus four. What happened to the pointer? All right, plus four plus F. F is four, which will be equal to nine. What about second path? A, 1, plus 3, plus 2. 
This one will be equal to 6. What about this one? B and G. Alright, B is 1 plus G is 2. This one will be 3. B and A. 1 plus E, 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 2, 2. This one will be 3. So which one is the critical part? Critical part is A, B, F. So you stay at the bottom. Critical part is ADF project completion is nine weeks. That's how you should calculate it. Let's see the uh, activity on arrow then. Activity on arrow. This is the activity on arrow. Uh, this one, uh, I think we have a different numbering. But, uh, okay, we have a different numbering. I have to remind you again because I just made it up in my head. Do it the same thing. A has 1. B has 1. Put at the bottom of it. C has 2. D has 3. E has, where is E? E has 4. F has 2. And G has 2 weeks. Right. So, first path. A. Path number 1. A. Go to D. Go to F. Correct? A. D. F. From the start to the finish one. Then the second path. A. Then from A you go to C. Take the bottom lane here. Take the bottom group, C, and then go to, from C, you cannot go back, of course. That's why it will not be confusing for you. You cannot go suddenly go to point 3. There is only one way. You go to G, A, C, G. And then after that, path number 3. Path number 3 is B, right? Select the dummy, and dummy is 0. You are not going to put the dummy. B, dummy, G, B, G. Right, and then activity number four, starting from B as well, and then go to E. Then after that, calculate it. A is one plus three plus two, and so on. But take a look at this. Take a look at the uh, available route. ADF, ACG, BG, BE. That's actually exactly the same with this one. So whether you are actually presenting it in AOA or AOM, it's it really depends on you. Which one should you use? Well, later on, if you want to... Actually, the easiest one is AON. Particularly later on, if you want to calculate the uh, early start, early finish using the uh, multiple boxes like this. Yeah. This one will give you a, a good advantage as well. But it's quite confusing. Why don't I like the uh, AON? Is because uh, once it goes quite complicated, you will have many crossovers and then and then it will be quite hard to interpret it but AON also have the advantage that project manager management software uh, most of project management software are actually covering the AON right now instead of AOA the reason one is AON okay so that's how you uh, don't forget to state later on uh, what is the critical path critical path is and then project completion time is and so on so that's why i say your assignments right now are actually not focusing to the calculation of early start early finish and so on you just need to calculate state it to me uh, what is the critical path what is the project completion time and for the exercise all you have to do is just to build the uh, activity and uh, activity on arrow and activity on node right so that's that's uh, the explanation any question? Thank you. I believe it should be sufficient for now. Uh, sir, um, project completion time is the time taken by the critical path. Yes, project yeah. completion time means that if you have IDP project, that means that you finish it by submitting the report and then there is no other task after that. Whatever until the very end task uh, it is, until the start to the end point. So, 
again, what is your question again? Uh, My question was the, the critical project path. completion time, is it defined by the critical, critical path? path? Okay. Yes, I critical know. path. Critical path can be changing later on, but that, that is for further uh, discussion. When we talk about crashing the thought, we are changing the uh, critical path, but that one will be for later. Sir, so is it possible to have more than one critical path? More than one critical path? Uh, you mean a critical path with more than one path possible it is possible if let's say uh where's my board okay sorry okay let's uh assume that your uh, path over here okay adf1 plus 3 plus 2 will also lead with the same calculation of this uh, a is 1 and then suddenly c is actually 3 as well and surprisingly g has duration of 2 as well what will happen uh, can you repeat sir okay for example you know that activity a uh, has the completion time of one week activity b one week right Activity C, okay, this one has two weeks. But what if actually I change activity to uh, C has three weeks completion of time and G have two weeks of completion of time equal to F. So when we go th for the calculation of root A, D, and F, we have to add one week plus three weeks. Uh, where is D? This one, right? plus two weeks of activity F, okay? And then activity uh, A, C, G is actually one here. Activity A is one. Activity C is three weeks. Look at this, I change it into three weeks, okay? Activity uh, G is two weeks. G is two weeks, right? And then for B and G, B is only one and G is 2 and then B is 1 plus 4 so what is the critical path this one it will be 6 and this one will be 6 right and this one will be 3 and this one will be 5 so which one is the critical path this are the critical Oops. path mm. yes Okay, it's it's quite rare actually to, uh, to have such coincidence, but is it possible? Yes, that means your project really depends on both through. Changing uh, one of the room will change the critical path as well, because later on suddenly you find out that activity C, for example, activity C is uh, the writing of your the writing of your project the writing of your project uh, and suddenly you find out that actually you can fasten the process of the writing and then activity C can be uh, changed into two. So this one will have five. Well then, the remaining critical path will be ADF. But is it possible for two? Yeah, possible. Okay, anything else? So if 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 uh, we have two critical paths, then our answer should be like we have two critical paths, right? We have two paths as the critical path. Okay. And the critical path obviously will be the biggest number, right? Yes. Because okay. uh, like if, uh, the, for the last one, if E is 6, then B plus E equal to 1 plus hold 6 on, hold on. Repeat equal to again. 7. Repeat again. That means that will be? Repeat again. Okay. 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 I'm saying that if the result number is big, then that will be the critical path, right? Yes. For example, uh, for for E, mm -hmm. number is four. Mm -hmm. If it, it replaced by six, then one plus six is seven. That yes. means that will be the critical path. Correct. Right? Correct. If suddenly this one, okay, okay this one is uh, we call it. Uh, let's let's say that this one is late. Okay, this one is late, and then suddenly it change into six weeks. Right. This one becoming seven. Right. In the plan, of course, uh, during according to the plan, you will complete activity E within four weeks. But you know, 
sometimes your teams are slacking around and then suddenly you find out that activity e is late and then it goes to six weeks that well then the critical path is also changing the critical path will be b and b that's why in the beginning you create the 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 network the flow and then you will put that uh, this network okay as uh, this one the wbs and the network as the baseline and then during the project everything will be changing later on sometimes few tasks can be delivered faster and then few tasks can be delivered a little bit later than it's supposed to be it's just a matter of calculation later on your idea is that the project manager is actually should control uh, should control the, the whole process uh, of the project and complete it according to the application anything else about okay. AOA and AON mm. uh, so start and end only uh, at AON Correct. You should uh, provide the starting point and the end point for. Uh, sorry, where is the? Uh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it is it is not uh, okay for you to start a project with two floating tasks and separate it like that. Every single project has the starting point and the end point. If you want to start an IDP project, there is a starting point. One starting time say that it's the kickoff meeting you meet your friend first meeting with your friend the kickoff meeting that signifies the uh, starting of the idp project and then the end the closing the closing of the project for example the submission you are submitting together to, to, to the supervisor or, or to the department or whoever uh, authorized for that process that's one uh, end process as well so that's why uh, that's how you should uh, treat it uh, usually for AOA, uh, well, uh, the the uh, starting point can be uh, merged into this. Uh, most of the time, this is for the numbering, for this. All right? Anything else? Uh, um, for AON, mm. if uh, our activity starts with only one activity and end with only one activity, then we don't need a start or end or we need start or end. Better you make the starting point. For example, you understand what I say? Say it again. Actually, uh, I mean it. If our activity is only one, mm. then we need start or not. And also, if we finish with only one last one activity, we need end or not. Okay. <laughs> Let's just simplify it. Uh, your project has only two activity A and B. Do you need start? point or an endpoint or not in the diagram <laughs> well it's quite rare to have only this kind of project yes. actually <laughs> uh, uh, better to put it as a standard uh, you know use it as a standard you have the start point okay and the end point signifying the activity for the AON that is a good practice for you even though actually it's quite rare to have this kind of case right or A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then it's just one chain, and then starting point is on the A, and then the end point is on the F, for example. Better to have the uh, starting and end point for that, signifying the starting point and end point of the project. Right. Next. Anything else? Uh, sir. Mm. Um, for the, as, uh, in case, for if the question is the same time for to use for AOA and AON mm. for we to use to calculate the critical path. Mm. So the critical path and the project completion time should be the same for AOA and o AON, right? Yes. Okay. It should, it should be the same. If, if suddenly uh, you have, <laughs> here's the thing, AON and AOA is just a different logic in approaching the uh, pictorial uh, representation of the diagram it's just uh, the network diagram is just uh, a statement uh, a pictorial representation saying that hey I have a project uh, I'm involved in, in my project FYP my pro my FYP is actually starting with activity A and finish with activity B okay this is a pictorial one 
Okay, this is A O uh, N. And or you can state it this way: I start with A, then I finish with B. But in the essence, it should always be the same. It has its own uh, completion amount of time, T1, T2, and this one also have T1 and T2. And the completion amount of time should always be the same. It's just the way you present it. Okay, whether you are using this or you are using this. Of course, they have their own uh, what do you call uh, advantage and with uh, drawback. For example, for activity on node, you can convert this node into into uh, uh, a method uh, of I forgot CPM P E R T uh, to to calculate the uh, early start later on and then early finish. Something that you cannot do with the activity uh, on arrow. So the statistical calculation for the activity on arrow uh, might not be uh, easier for you to be done for early start, early finish, slack. For the uh, activity on arrow, you have a separated calculation for that. But if it is only to find out a uh, critical path and also uh, to present uh, the network diagram in a proper manner, because sometimes you find out that uh, activity on node has many crossovers, for example, since it is quite complicated in your case, uh, and you have many crossovers, then better to stick to AOA if it's just something simple. But yeah, AON is usually preferred by the students. Okay, anything else? Right? Okay. Uh, no. Okay, if that's the case, then I might end the session. And about since uh, I think this one has been lasting quite long, <laughs> for the explanation of uh, early start, early finish, uh, late start, late, late finish, slack calculation, I will explain it. I will try to uh, explain it again later on, probably after you uh, finish with the uh, network diagram first. I think it will be covered. Maybe next week, I think. Maybe next week. After uh, Prof. Eri explained the whole thing first, and then after that, uh, if you have a question, uh, a few questions probably, then I can explain a few questions like this and then share the uh, recordings probably. Right? Okay, any other questions? Uh, by the way, sir, hmm. <laughs> so um, we don't actually need to use the ESFS like. To find a critical path, right? Did we use? There is just another method, or what? <laughs> did we use? Uh, did we did we calculate early start, early finish just now to calculate the critical path? In the example. Yes. Ah uh, yes. Mm, no no no. I'm 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 asking uh, you. Did we just use? Uh, or did we calculate early start, early finish, uh, and then including slack? For the calculation no. of this one, for for this one, did did no, we no. use that one? No, right. So actually, we don't okay. need it. Uh, okay. Right. For your next assignment, I believe you are referring to the next assignment because I asked the calculation for the critical path and the completion of the project only in the assignment. I didn't give you uh, the calculation of critical path and project completion time uh, in the two exercises. Can I? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, so if you don't have any other questions, okay. Uh, is it clear enough? Thank you. Just in case. So clear. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. Anyone else? Amira, probably. Mustakim. Ali. Sajad. No question. All right. Clear. clear no, okay. Okay. No question. Okay, okay good. Okay, then I will Thank end. You. All right, sure. I will end the session and then probably uh, we will have another session after Prof. Eddie explained to you on the uh, next one. Right? Oh, hold on. Let me check the chat first just in case because I am i couldn't uh, pay attention to the that one. Mm, so it means that not necessarily if an activity have two predecessor, we need to use dummy. Okay, I think I answered this one right from Tunku. If I so critical path time is the project completion time? Yes. No, critical path is the <laughs> is the path used. Uh, yeah, well, technically it's almost uh, similar. The critical path is the longest part. 
and it signifies uh, the end and the uh, the starting point and the end point. It it is the critical it is the critical task that will define the whole duration of the project. Um, anyway, thanks, 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 thanks. Crystal clear. All right. Okay. If you don't have any other questions, I will stop my presentation. I will compile it and then I will try to upload it probably for uh, your future reference. All right. Thank you very much. And then. Yes, I'll see you next time. I'll see you around. All right? Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you.